Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. Um, we have our next guest online, and that, of course, is Roshan Dadu. She's a long-standing activist and member of the South African BDS Coalition. Roshan, thank you indeed for being so patient. Uh, welcome to the show. And, yeah, we seem to talk uh, whenever there's these type of situations playing out around the world, particularly in Palestine. Uh, we are going to be talking with you this morning about uh, the type of products we ought to be, um, you know, knocking off our list, so to speak, uh, in support of uh, the current situation in Gaza. Um, I guess it's current, but it's been very, very long standing. Talk to us about this list here talk to talk to us about not only the actions of bds in south africa but all around the world and what sort of pushback are you getting if any thanks thanks for inviting us and to talk about something that we can all actually do um to put pressure um on uh, on companies to not to um support the genocide in gaza and I think obviously, you know, there's no doubt that there are many global companies as part of the global structure of the economy, which is racial capitalism, that are complicit in the genocidal war that's being waged by Israel today. And some of these companies are involved in apartheid Israel's economy to varying degrees. And all of these should be held accountable um, because of their support of Israel's crimes against Palestinians and boycotts um, are justified and called for. But in the BDS movement, we try to target and have strategic boycotts. So we're all focused on specific targets that are the most complicit. And so they're global campaigns, for instance, as uh, Puma is the one that I think we in South Africa should really target because I'm sure many people who are watching now actually have Puma clothes, um, they're so popular across South Africa, across all our demographics. The clothes, they also sponsor local teams of sports. They provide sports scholarships. They also have started sponsoring young mus musicians and music um, sort of uh, events and so on. So they're very present here and they're very directly complicit through their sponsorship of the Israeli soccer team. And around the world, they're being targeted and they're feeling the pressure. Their last AGM, there was protests outside. I think even some people managed to get inside and they're really feeling the pressure. And given their, the way that they have come into the South African market, I think that's one that we could focus on because it's not just us, it's people all around the world. But another one, McDonald's, for instance, I think everyone knows that they have directly been giving uh, food and so on to the occupation forces as they're committing genocide. And McDonald's, again, it's something that's popular in South Africa that I think we could and should target for a boycott. Um, but there are other local companies, and I think those are the ones we also need to target. One of which I'm sure everyone knows is Cape Union Mart. And I think that's important because that's a South African company um, that's been built up as a South African company. And yet the, the CEO, Philip Kravitz, is so proud of giving. In fact, during the, in 2015, he won an award for giving the most money to Israel in their war efforts of the 2014 um, onslaught on Gaza. So I think we should demand that he stand up now and say he is not funding the genocide that's going on now. And if we buy from his shops, our money will go directly to fund those that genocide. He's one of the most. He's in, in one. Of, he's involved at senior level in local Zionist organizations, but also in in um, the Jewish Agency for Israel, which is the agency since 1929, has been sole purpose, raise money, settle, um, uh, settle Jewish people on the land, raise more money, settle more people, the ones that encourage Jewish people to move to Israel in the false belief that that's their homeland. I mean, it's a fundamental uh, tenet of Zionism from the very beginning. Uh, and he's a senior person on the board of governors. So you can see that, and that person, that Philip Kravitz, 
trades on being a South African businessman, a proudly South African, and give some money to various South African things, well, no, pick a side, I, I think he should, and say, if you're proudly South African and you want your company to trade on that kind of a, a brand, and you want people to buy from your company, then come out and say you are not giving money to fund this war effort, this genocidal war effort. So that's one I think we can target. And I think also one of the other aspects of boycott, I mean, there's some things that people maybe personally, they would, you know, feel in their conscience, they, uh, you know, there's a connection with um, the party Israel of a certain company and they feel that in their conscience, they wouldn't want to purchase the whatever it is from that company. And I think that's great. And we all do that in different ways. But I think when it's a political campaign, then it's also a way of picketing outside those businesses. And especially ones like McDonald's or Cape Union Mart um, or Puma, they're everywhere around the country. So everyone can go and do this. Because that way, when we've done it, you end up talking to people, you have the discussion, why are you there? You explain why you're there. You, you are actually engaging with people, giving out leaflets, encouraging people to get involved. And so you're mobilizing people at the same time as putting pressure on the companies. And the companies can't stand it. They're very, very worried. McDonald's has already issued a letter saying, the South Africa McDonald's saying, oh, it's nothing to do with us. Um, we're a totally separate franchise. Um, you know, we're nothing to do with it. But they are because the parent company... Um, Would you like to switch that off, please? Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> you know, the, okay. the parent company is complicit. So, it's direct. so I think, you know, those are the sort of focus boycotts. There's others as well. ZZ2 Tomatoes is another one because it's it, the seedlings come from an Israeli company that's actually in Ooh. Southern Okay, They're I was different. not aware of that. Uh, okay, and I know... <laughs> Uh, let me come in here, Russian. Let me come in here. I know that there are, I think, 14 pages. I haven't gone through the entire, uh, you know, uh, lot of pages. Uh, there are 14 pages where you as BDS have um, obviously listed all of the companies and the products that one should be aware of that is funding uh, the genocide in um, on the Gazan people and the whole of Palestine. So we need to make ourselves familiar with all of this. I'm wondering about alternatives going forward. Would it kind of almost be a good idea for BDS? And now it's going to be um, labour intense, uh, but to give us an alternative. So don't buy Puma, buy brand x for example so if you gave an alternative you just make it simpler for people you and i are very conscious of all of this but like you indicate not everyone is so they'll just go about their business as usual not knowing this is what's going down these are the people complicit as regards the funding of the genocide on innocent people and here's a viable alternative for you so you just make it simpler for them well, I think, you know, we can't really uh, promote other companies, but what we can ah. do is point out <laughs> which companies are complicit. And so, you know, that yes, there's a long list because people often ask, and I think we should know where what's going on in our <laughs> racial capitalist global economy. We should know in products now it's so complicated that this, you know, parts of a product or a um, something will come from, uh, you know, this country and that country. And we should know that. We should, you know, we should be aware of what's what's in and the products we're buying. But I think if we target the boycotting campaigns that way, we're calling on everyone to to specifically target. And I think this Cape Union Mart story is very important because it's directly part. The the owner is directly giving our money when we buy something there directly to the Israeli occupation forces in the war effort. If you look on the website of Karen Hayesod, the organization that has been since 1929, specifically there in order to settle, in order to settle um, 29, obviously you can see how, how much before uh, 47, 48 and the Nakba, there was already this, um, this uh, the, the kind of organizations of Zionism that, would, that were um, working towards that project. And this is a South African company, and I think it's essential 
that we target um, Philip Kravitz and demand that he he comes out and says, I'm not funding the genocide in Gaza. The tomatoes is also another one. There are two directly Israeli nurseries in South Africa. The first one was in Limpopo, and now they've opened another one in the Western Cape. The company is called Hishil. If you look at its logo, it's written in Hebrew. It's an Israeli company. The head office is in, is in um, apartheid Israel. Now, ZZ2 Tomatoes, in fact, they almost have a monopoly on the seedlings, is one of their biggest uh, contractors. And so uh, targeting the ZZ2 Tomatoes to say, why? Why are you complicit in, in this Israeli company's um, nurseries here? It's, a, it's kind of now almost a virtual monopoly, but obviously calling on people to never buy a tomato is not <laughs> going to be strategic. But if we target the one, the biggest distributor of the tomatoes from the, the, the Hishil company, then I think we can make progress and demand that whatever South African investment is part of enabling that Hishil to be here, very much upfront Israeli company, nurseries all over um, obviously what, what was Palestinian land within apartheid Israel, then I think we can really make a, a good, uh, really push them on that. And the other one, of course, just to mention is Clover. We know what happens when the government, despite all our efforts, allowed um, the takeover of Clover by the apartheid Israeli company. We saw what happened. Workers were, ended up losing their jobs, plants were being closed, conditions of work deteriorated, and the solidarity shown from the Palestinian unions during the strike of the Clover workers I think really made them see that we're in one struggle together. And so boycotting Clover, I think, until we can get this reversed, until we can um, stop this, uh, this uh, uh, competition commission decision, that it was fine for an Israeli company to buy into and take over. Um, and again, another, it was kind of a very South African company that no, it's not okay. And particularly as this genocide continues, we really have to take the, make as much effort as we can, target these companies, know why we're targeting them and know what our demands are because otherwise we're just sitting on our sofas. I think uh, Carl Nial said that and, and we're not acting. And this is something we can do both personally, but also it only takes a few people to go and stand outside one of these, like a Puma store, um, for instance. And if you're there and you're giving out leaflets and you have a banner, people talk to you and you can start the conversation. You can encourage more people to be aware of the complicity in our, in our country um, of apartheid Israel in a post-apartheid South Africa. Roshan, let me uh, share a, a message by Stephen Gibson, and this is what he's saying. Why boycott Israel's products? Um, let's just get it up on the screen. I'm having a bit of difficulty um, reading the message. So I'm waiting for my controller to get the message on screen so I can share it with you. Somebody clearly not agreeing with BDS and you and I having this discussion. Uh, so Stephen Gibson is asking why uh, boycott Israel's products? Hamas. This is, uh, this is classic. Hamas are the guilty culprits. Would the suffering people of Gaza boycott Israel's products in times of now when they have no food, no water, etc.? I think not. I think Stephen misses the point completely. He doesn't understand the context to what is going on, the, uh, the current situation by the genocidal Israelis. Um, I hope someone can give him a lesson and a good talking to to understand what exactly is happening in apartheid Israel. But what would you like to respond to him? Well, of course, I mean, it's um, the occupying force of Israel in a completely disproportionate way is committing genocide. It's clearly genocide, bombing civilians um, throughout Gaza relentlessly. Um, telling people to move from the north to the south and bombing the south, bombing them as they're moving, there's nowhere safe, not allowing in any kind of humanitarian aid. I think there was a couple of traps, but they won't allow fuel in the hospitals in Gaza today, said that's it, there's nothing more they can do. They can't operate because they don't have fuel. I mean, you know, the death toll is over 5,000 people. 
Um, I think it's now about 60% are children. Um, you know, uh, it, clearly it, it's it's uh, ridiculous to say, um, to not see this. And the, of course, you know, since uh, the Nakba, Palestinians have been living under occupation, have been, um, you know, forcibly removed, ethnically cleansed from areas. And so it's not surprising that people resist as we did under apartheid after so many years of colonialism and apartheid. So it's really, I don't know what his point he's making is, to be honest. I think uh, just not the awareness of what exactly the issue is in uh, apartheid Israel. I think people seem to think that the land does rightfully belong to the Zionists, which we do know history tells us differently. But be that as it may, we do need to wrap up. What other final words do you have for us this morning regarding BDS and the call for boycotts? Well, I hope you know that we can really build strong campaigns, uh, boycott campaigns, and target these particular companies. But also, you know, there's lots of uh, um, uh, actions going on on Saturday, in particular, National Day of Action at um, events at Zoo Lake protests, and also a rally there, um, also in Cape Town and other places around the country. So I think we really need to get out, get off our sofas, get out. Um, protest, you know, where there are protest actions, boycott the products, boycott the, the uh, complicit companies that are here in, in our country and say we want this to be an apartheid free zone and we must end the genocide. Roshan Dadu, BDS, thank you indeed uh, for your insights. And of course, we do call on everyone to do their bit. If this is all you can do, then believe you me, it is a lot. Because if each and every one of us do boycott these companies, can you imagine the collective impact? And that's what we're talking about, are we not? Thank you, yes. Go well. And, of course, that brings us to two after nine o'clock. That was Roshan Dadu. She, of course, is a long-standing activist and member of the South African BDS Coalition. We're moving on now. And, of course, our uh, correspondent is standing by with the Bulletin of the Morning. That is you, of course, Zai Jadwit. Let's take a short break and we'll connect up with Zai Jadwit.